today we are discussing the complexity issues. There are two complexities, mainly time complexity and the space complexity. Later on, we will see the energy complexity also, how much energy it would consume particular process. But take the example of the time complexity, which is the utmost importance. The worst case is we measure it by big O complexity. And the more tighter, more average, we will consider by big theta. And another term we will be seeing here that is big omega, that is the lower limit. Lower limit we generally do not consider most of the cases. We are most concerned with be big O and average is the big theta. You can take it as a, one can take it as theta, the middle portion is the, is the average thing. Then uh, this is the worst case, big O big theta and amortized complexity that is the complexity with no probability over n number of occasion or the n number of n, n completions then take the average that I will consider later. This is the issues we will discuss today. We here it is a big O and how the when the number of inputs increase how the it is affects we will discuss. What is algorithm? Algorithm is nothing but a recipe. The big, uh, best example is a recipe. It is a steps. Each steps should be there is some input and input pattern is also matters. I will discuss uh, because any number, any way of input, if, if there will be no algorithm. So there is a definite pattern in input and the output will be definite pattern and algorithm is nothing but a step by step approach and they will uh, that's it. And it is basically correctly, we can tell it is a recipe. Here you can see how the input matters. Say Romans, we, uh, everybody told the Romans generally uh, consider number system this is. This is one of their downfall because they do not know the decimals. And you see the advantage of putting decimals, how you can multiply addition and all. And when the Romans employ this kind of input technique, that is definitely a very, very negative thing for the algorithm. Well, okay, there will be algorithm, but that will be less efficient. So, input does matter. The Any algorithm correctness is factors. The, the, these are the characteristics. Input I have discussed. The correctness means it should be corrected for all possible types of different types of input. Finiteness, effectiveness and generality. The analysis framework we consider here, this is a constant factor execution time for basic operation and this is the input size. This input size, remember, it can be for say number of sorting elements, it can be n. In, if you input is a graph, there will be number of uh, vertexes and number of edges. That is uh, number of v's and the edges would be matter instead of n. We would see it. Uh, the input also not necessarily should n. It can be like n in graph problem. It is v plus v number of vertices and edges. This is and another thing is uh, space complexity. This is very usual. We generally see the sorting algorithm in mass sort. You, you need an extra space, but uh, in uh, bubble sort or insertion sort or selection sort and mostly. Uh, quick sort also doesn't need that much amount of extra space and particularly this uh, insertion sort, selection sort, these are in, in, many, in situ that means you do not need any extra space and in the quick sort the number of spaces liquid is much less than mass sort. So mass sort take the extra space complexity. If you space complexity uh, matters so in that case uh, we may think of instead of mass sort maybe heat sort heat sort uh, can uh, sort the elements within the particular space itself and uh, giving the same n log n advantage but one thing is that mass sort is the stable sort that i have discussed stable sort means the input order and matches in the output order output order matches the input order same values also uh, comes in the input should uh, show the same values in the order is maintained in the output that is called stable sorting. Mass sort is stable, quick sort is not stable, heat sort is not stable. So, so that is one criteria. These are the uh, big O complexities, constant complexity. We know the push operation of 
of operation of a, uh, of a stack or finding a particular an element of an array. These are the constant complexity, logarithmic complexity, any balanced binary search tree that we get the log n to the base 2, uh, linear complexity uh, uh, in an array find the max or mean is the uh, linear complexities. The linear arithmetic n log n, we know the mass sort is n log n, heap sort is n log n. Polynomial complexities, we come the matrix multiplication comes uh, polynomial com complexity. Uh, and the exponential complexity, we know this is the tower of Hanoi. Uh, always uh, you need a 2 to the power n minus 1 steps. Uh, factorial complexity is one example in travel system. So generally these are hugely difficult problems, then we have to have some approximate algorithm for them. Uh, till polynomial complexity is perfectly okay, we call this tractable problems. Whenever it goes to the exponential, then it will call the, even if 2 to the power 8, that is also a very difficult problem. We call this intractable problem. We will discuss it. Like exponential tower of Hanoi, matrix multiplication, or this quadratic uh, problem, linear algorithmic problem, we will discuss it. Here I discussed that is a big O and this is our actual function group. So more tighter control, maybe you can give a big theta here, which is nearer to this. This is bigger notation. Uh, here you can see that uh, here the dominant term is n square, not n log n. Uh, here the dominant term is uh, 3 log n and this log dominant term is log n. So here also it is exponential. So it is logarithmic like tower of Hanoi problem. Uh, there also you can see the is weight problem because log n is much smaller than this and this is the addition. If it is a multiplicative, then it is called the linear logarithmic. but if it is addition, we call it the linear problem. The theta notation uh, that is very useful, uh, that is the, it is more restrictive and give the average and omega is the lower bound, mostly useless. These are the constant algorithm, I say that these are the constant logarithmic, the binary search, I already told you. The linear is a loop, yes, uh, if it is a loop within a loop, that is n square. Uh, if a loop within a loop within a loop is n cube. Linear is n log n, like mass sort, uh, heap sort. These are the mostly quick sort because 99.9 .9 cases, the quick sort gives n log n, which is even the much quicker than mass sort. Very rare cases, quick sort gives over n square. Uh, n square is a double loop, cubic, cubic, triple loop and tau of n problem. This is, if we plot this, uh, this like this, the problem size, I have told you it can be in sorting, it can be number of items in, in sort of graph problem, number of vertexes and number of edges. Mm, this is uh, this problem, but we can simplify it with a log log problem, Lo log log graph like here. It is, uh, this area is more inflated, uh, mostly uh, for uh, cubic, this kind you can call is a polynomial, but these are called the easy problems, in computer science these are called very easy problems, but that is always a research how to make cubic to quadratic or in between, um, quadratic to n log n in between and the, the slope of this curve. How it can be with linear arithmetic, I can make it a much steeper curve, less steeper. That is always some uh, research will, will always go on. Uh, but uh, these are the intractable problems, exponential. Another thing I have not shown here that is a factorial, it is much steeper here. This is uh, this is exponential, uh, even a small size of n, uh, the, uh, n and 10n, you will never get an answer, even if whatever powerful computer. So exponential problem, this row is, is a very difficult problem. A lot of problems in real world, mainly 99 problems in this, uh, with no algorithm, if the algorithm is there, the complexity is exponential. So this is the challenge for the computer science. Here the problems are sorted, and but okay, the better algorithm is coming. But here the problem is sometimes there is no algorithm still found. And if the algorithm is found, the 
uh, steps is exponential or uh, this thing uh, or factorial. This is much deeper than this exponential. Tower of Hanoi, say uh, 2 to the power n minus 1 for n number of bits. You see the number of steps, uh, 7 steps, 2 because it's 3 digits, 2 to the power cube minus 1 by 2 to the power cube means 8 minus 1, 7. So, this is the Tower of Hanoi problem. This is a problem. This is the most fundamental problem. You cannot make much simpler this problem. So, this is the utmost simple problem of the exponential problem. So, for any exponential problem, you can compare with the Tower of Hanoi problem. For two degree bar exponential. Here, we can see the asymptotic uh, and, uh, complexity behavior. See, if we take this loop, we can put this in our uh, our collab and we see there are 1000 addition and 1000 uh, first multiplication and uh, 10 1 is to 1 and if you see for um, for uh, additions for 10 data is 1010 for like this but whenever the data becomes huge there is this um, this term like this loop con uh, mainly only overruled this loop. So, this is only simply uh, the n loop and this is the n square. So, what I want to show it here, the n does not matter, it is the O n square, this is the, this loop controls the your behavior and remember whenever we measure the complexity, worst case stamping complexity of a problem, we take n to be bigger, not smaller, maybe it's, there is some n to you, the, uh, the, your this graph is little lower, but after n0, uh, it will rise sharply. So, here the, it is whenever it takes a very infinite, not infinite, say big, big number, then you should consider. Say here, you should not consider for uh, this uh, 10, because it comes only the 12, 10, and whenever it comes 1000, the figure comes like this. Like this. Here you can see the number of comings. Uh, is F10 and if F1000. So, F10, the numbers is this and F1000, numbers. The more uh, term is controlling this n square. So, here we see how the algorithm affects. It is a typical bisection, how to find a root out by bisection formula. Uh, this is the basic algorithm. We put it in our collab and we see if we do not follow the divide by 2 and Again, such uh, a minus b two solutions uh, by two, and they try it. We do not. If you do not do it, then the if you want to find the square root of hundred, uh, it will give after this number of uh, loops, and it will take uh, three point two nine in a collab, typical collab sheet. But if we change the algorithm to this algorithm, where we always try the midpoint, and here this is the algorithm, and if you put it in collab, in our attached collab sheet, we can find it, we can find it, it is only 22 loops. So, algorithm does matter, it, it will more correct answers, and uh, instead of million loops, it is a 22. So, how we attack the problem, same input, the algorithm gives a much better solution. That thing I want to prove it here. So, what we have covered, the average case complexity, Worst case complexity, do this is two matters most, basically O, P, Go and Big Theta and base case, Big Omega, we do not consider. So, this is um, practically no use and this is, I wish to cover now, the amortized complexity. Amortized complexity is no probability in repeat, average time taken for a sequence of consecutive operation. Which is, remember the sequence of operation. Say, if one uh, one's father takes a loan for a car, for a particular bank, say 10,000 rupees, per month uh, for 5 years continuously for amount of loans say around 10 lakhs. Uh, I am not sure whether 10 lakhs will come to that in 5 years, but if uh, 2 or 3 installment had failed, they have to keep fine say around say 1000 rupees. So, now we can say the amount is complexity not that 10,000, that 10,000 and 2 extra 1000 that is 2000 together and divided by 5 years, that is the amount is complexity. That is the more realistic complexity measures over lifetime of a particular problem or particular issues. So, this is amortized complexity. It is basically worst case complexity divided by m uh, operations. 
So, like here you can see a particular array, if you want to put some stack or if when the stack is filled up then the dynamically stack is increased in Python or in Java array list. So, this is the point when it is doubled, they, what they do in Java or Python, they just copy all the things and see size increase. Here the grey dots are here where we will get a very uh, fixed time, that is you can say is the uh, one at a time, say it, it generally increased like 8, 32, 64, 128, 64, 128, 32. Then, whenever this is reached, they create another array and copies all the 64 elements and do, then put the 65th. So, this is the extra uh, time, this gray dot, this is the extra time required for particular operations. So, it is uh, after the 32, 64, 128, 68, the gray dot, and otherwise the gray dot comes here and the amortized cost is uh, like rate which is slightly uh, bigger than this but definitely lesser than this. So, it is the whole cost is uh, average to the whole operation. So, this is more realistic uh, time complexity over a length of uh, lifetime. Like uh, if you do the sorting first and then the and put it in a uh, binary search tree, if you find it, uh, then uh, definitely it will give you much better, but this will take only once, once you have to data sort and then this time would be distributed for k operations. So, this is much better, when every time you do not have to sort, the far the only one that is take time and then after sorting you put the data in a sorted like binary search tree or a real tree, you will get much better. So, refining our analysis is the, what I have discussed today, that is worst case, uh, most of the cases like uh, we have discussed like quick sort, uh, the worst case does not give the good picture of quick sort because most of the in Java, Python, most of the basic sorting is always quick sort. Mm, quick sort is 99.99 percent time it gives the n log n. Uh, n log n complexity is also mass sort and heat sort, but we sort n log n the multiplicative factor is definitely 3 times faster, two, between 2 to 3 times faster than mass sort and uh, between 1 to 2 times than heat sort. Remember heat sort is faster than mass sort and quick sort is faster than heat sort, uh, most of the cases. But mass sort one advantage is it is a stable sorting, uh, quick sort and heat sort is not stable sorting. Uh, average case will consider, base case will never consider, so amortized analysis is another way uh, of uh, time complexity, it is over the lifetime of this, um, lifetime of the instructions, lifetime of the running that particular program on this, so, amortized analysis gives us uh, greater idea how your software is behaving. Thank you for this.